hello and welcome to my channel Emma Jane's Garden. I would like to welcome you to sunny Cornwall but it's actually not that sunny although it is at the moment I think it's been wetter than it's been sunny which is a bit of a shame but that brings me to the title of this video and I wanted to show you that flower farming isn't all picking flowers in the sunshine although possibly it is today I'm not sure what's going on there's a black cloud over there don't worry <laughs> um, and I want to show you what happened to this cutting garden that I was doing at home and this has happened in the last month and it has gone crazy and um, I'm really struggling to keep on top of it so for all of you out there are wondering how you keep on top of the weeds <laughs> You don't. So let me show you what's going on. So this is the cutting garden and these are the beds that I made. Um, this was meant to be my beautiful border this side um, and what's happened is the weeds have basically taken over. On the path here this has done exactly what I wanted it to do. I wanted the steps to look like they were just built into the the hill um, so I'm not too worried about that although a lot of it is annual weeds which I just wanted it to be grass so I could trim it, but it's a bit annoying. But as you can see, this bed never did get finished because of my um, bad bat that I had, so it's been left. Um, and then I've had a few other issues. So as we go up, so this is the bed that hasn't been dug. I mean, it was half dug, um, and then my husband stole my bit of wood that was meant to be here to do the rather large decking that we've got up there. So that kind of took priority over what was going on down here at the time. But some good things have happened. I've got in amongst all these crazy weeds, which there is a lot of, I've got some lovely dahlias come in. Um, this is a good one, look, he's just come in. Um, but I should have stopped him really, because see how thick this stem is. I mean, that's absolutely no good for cutting. But now he's got that far, I'm going to let him flower and then I'll just snip him off. But what you should do is at this point here, I should have stopped them. So I need to cut these ones off, um, which will make them branch more. And I want branches. I don't want big, thick stems. I want lots and lots of stems for cutting. Um, as you can see, the ami that was in here is all looking all right. This bed isn't too bad. Um, there's, there is weeds, but it's not so bad. It's the next bed up that is the worst. So on this one, I was hurrying it quite regularly um, because of this little blue flower um, that comes out, which is quite pretty. Um, so I don't really mind it, but what I do mind is when it started strangling the plants. So I did start to hoe, which has helped. Um, and then we had such a wet, We've had it so wet that everything just is taken off. But as you can see, my Achillea or Yarrow is absolutely beautiful. And over the last couple of days has really start to flourish. I think this is going to be a real pale um, orangey one. Um, my Delphiliums are just starting again. But look at the weeds. It's just weed city. And they're just strang strangling all my plants. And I've realised that these two beds more this bed I put a lot of farmyard manure I mean I bought it from a shop so I didn't get it from a farm I bought it from a shop in a bag farmyard manure and the weeds that are here some of them I haven't got anywhere else in this garden um, and I think it's come from the farmyard manure because I've got a few down on that bed as well where the dahlias are and I'm thinking there was something in that farmyard manure because I did I only use one bag on there this one had two bags um, so I'm thinking that's what it was. I think I'll just keep to my chicken poo. Um, although my chickens have emptied my compost bin for me because they have got into it and they've scratched it all out. But they've turned it nicely so I'm just using it from the floor and putting it into things. I've just planted a beautiful rose, um, which well, I hope it's going to be beautiful. Um, so anyway, I'm rambling. So yeah, this is this is the product of needing to get on top of your weeds and not being able to but I'm still able to pick buckets loads of flowers I've got some lovely sweet williams here and these have done really well I've been picking from these I mean that the rain's really got to them now um, but I have been picking from here um, I've got loads of mints going mad and I didn't mind it going mad because it's under the climbing tree so I thought well I'll leave it to go mad um, 
and then oh that sun is actually really warm now it's out so obviously i've got my dahlias coming now um that's another one just starting to get ready to pop um and the ami is there but even through the weeds i've got plenty of flowers to be able to use i've got my cosmos starting to come what i'm saying is don't despair over the fact that maybe your garden looks more like a weed patch than a garden um if you're using it for cut flowers a garden is a whole different thing <laughs> this is why i like cut flowers because they're not fussy as long as they're still getting food they're still getting water and they're still getting sunlight they'll carry on growing um and if you see anything struggling you just need to weed around it um i am going to start weeding this and i will do you a shot of once i've weeded it what it looks like um this garden on the other hand, which is meant to be more of a garden than a cutting patch, I really do need to sort out. As you can see, it's gone a little bit mad. Um, I mean, there's flowers in there, because obviously this is meant to be a border slash cutting garden. So everything that I've grown in here is able to be cut, but also looks beautiful as a border. Um, but it's all, I mean, things like, I've got docks in here. I've got loads of um, plantain, um, but if you look, I've got plants, like there's a sedum in there, aquilidra, I can't remember what it is, I think this was a pot mum, you know you get them in the supermarket, I bought it last year, my daughter bought it for me, um, and actually this was a cutting, I literally, I snapped a bit off, a bit like that, I snapped this bit off um, when we were planting it and I shoved it in a pot. Um, and I couldn't remember what it was, so I planted it, and actually, that is, it's like a chrysanthemum, so, um, that's where that one came from, and actually it's beautiful. Um, I've got some snapdragons there, um, these are big, tall, um, daisies, they're called, um, something cream, they're like a yellow, big, yellow, tall daisy. So there's loads of plants here, but I also have things like bindweed <laughs> growing up now bindweed is one that i do need to get rid of because i had a lot of it here last year yeah the bindweed was a pain in the butt last year it was everywhere and i resorted to spraying in the end because it was the only way to get rid of it um see it looks pretty although it's full of weeds it does look pretty and the alcamilla mollis at the end here this yellow stuff is just amazing it's the most amazing filler for doing cut flowers it really is it's absolutely stunning. Um, but yeah, bindweed. Ugh, so annoying. I thought I'd managed to get rid of it, but bits keep popping up. But that's the problem with it. If you leave the smallest amount in the ground, you're going to get it again. And I think the best thing is just to keep pulling at it. But I have some friends. So whilst I'm weeding, this is what I do. So this is my weeding. So if I'm weeding, pulling... I mean, this, this blue flower, once you pull... It comes out fairly easily. Um, it's just a pain, because it's there, really. And then, we take these weeds to my friends. Ta-da! And, chick, 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 chick. And they eat all my weeds for me. I love it, so good. And they love it, because they get some nice greens. Um, <laughs> they get to pick out everything that they've got. My handy little weed eaters. Um, last year I used to let them out actually in the garden, but they're not very specific about what they eat. They also eat my plants, which isn't as useful. So I throw them the weeds now, and they like that. They get to scratch around. Okay, so back up. So yeah, weeding, although it seems like a mammoth task when you look at it, isn't too bad. Um, and you know, we'll get there. So what I'll do is I'll take you over to the allotment as well and I'm gonna show you how bad it looks over there. Um, because I've got weeds coming up all over the place and I do regret not putting more of the weed fabric down. Um, I did one bed on weed fabric and I burnt the holes through it and that's been brilliant. Um, Unfortunately, due to our mammoth 
decking area up here um, we needed to use all the weed fabric to go under our decking and we've got artificial grass and things up there but that's for another video I'll show you that um, so it all got used there um, and it's expensive stuff you know so I thought for this year we'll see how it goes and see is it really neat do I really need it you know I see all these people putting it down and I think oh you know do you actually need that and then when it was really really hot whenever that was beginning of June um, I was over watering and I was thinking every time I lifted up the bit that had it I thought god it, it's keeping the water in maybe I do need it and now since we had that rain after the heat we've now got the weeds and I'm thinking actually yeah I can see why people use it I wasn't sure if it was a good idea or not but you know so next year I will be definitely investing in more weed fabric and I will be planting through the weed fabric um, my chickens are doing some really funny things down there with the weeds um, but yeah, so that's that. So why don't we take a trip to the allotment and I'll show you what it looks like over there. So it's actually the next day because as predicted, that sun did not last. Um, so I decided to just wait till today because today is meant to be a much nicer day and then I'm going to spend the whole day trying to sort out these plots um but yeah so we're down on the allotment um and i'll show you what this plot looks like so this is the plot it looks actually it looks amazing i'm really happy with this a lot of that is weeds but a lot of that is flowers look at these sunflowers i'm actually regretting not putting another bit of um i put some netting up and then I was meant to come along and do the other netting and I completely forgot and by the time I came to do it they'd got too big so they'll be fine that'll be right I'm gonna have to just stake them that's all anyway we're talking about weeds so along here all the way along here is my sweet Williams this is a path believe it or not and then so this little weed um, grows everywhere but actually I don't mind it growing because it's on a path it's not competing against any of my plants and it does tend to keep the moisture in the ground um, because it's covering and actually if you were to pull one of these up you can see how much space it makes so one plant is fairly easy to weed so if you wanted to weed it you can I'm I'm thinking of leaving these here just to hold on to some moisture um, and then I put my artificial path in here, which is artificial lawn, which I get from my husband because that's what he does for a job. So I've always got offcuts and that lying around. So I'll be using them as paths. Um, and then I've got my amaranth. Look at this. Aren't these amazing? Look at that. Look at the length on them. So these are going to look amazing in bouquets. And then I've got green ones further back, which look great in wedding bouquets. Um, again, this is that same weed that's growing up. This is that same weed, but I will weed it out of the actual beds, but where it's just on the path up there, I'm probably going to just leave it. Um, so yeah, you can see these are the green. Um, here, look. And they just look lovely hanging down from a wedding bouquet. Really pretty. Um, and then we've got the beginning of my status. Um, and actually that hasn't got that many weeds in it. It's, they kind of take over a little bit. There's a few. But if you look down, look, look how many flowers there are. So although this is really weedy, there's a lot of flowers here. Um, I could pick three buckets at least from this today, um, which I will actually be doing this afternoon. So I might even bring you with me when I cut them and I'll show you how many buckets I can get. Um, again, this is a path here. You can actually see there is a bit of a path going up here. So I've got the rose bed this side. Um, I've got my... Um, courgettes which I use in I use as a basis for my um, re, um, table displays and I will I will show you how I do that which is why I grow the courgettes I also eat them um, we've got red beans the roses are, are doing so good I don't know if anyone saw my videos where I was getting upset about my roses but they are really starting to come so the ones that I got from my friends are these ones and you can barely see them because they're covered in weeds this is one of the lot I will need to start pulling out because they're going to start strangling them um, and but they do have buds 
look and I didn't even think these were going to flower this year so they've got buds on them and even Lady Emma has buds I'm so happy about that because I was so upset I thought I'd killed them so we've got some um, perennial phlox there that big white flower okay so this is weed city here this really is bad um, this is bit I will I do need to do something with this so these are my scabious ping pongs you can see they've got this lovely blue flower um, but I don't use them for this these I just let go over and I use them for the seed heads so when the seed head comes up I'll show you what they look like I really haven't got any there they've just started um, I've got some verbena down there which is really struggling because of the weeds that is one of the things I do need to weed um, some nigella pods which I need to cut down for drying I've got some cosmos come in I didn't even know it was there <laughs> see sometimes if you just leave things things grow I had cosmos here last year um but look at this this is my um achillea and look look a little moth and this is what makes it all worthwhile is having so much nature which is why I tend to leave as many weeds as I can obviously you can't leave them all that's just be silly but you do I think some of the weeds are beneficial um I love this is actually a type that is actually a hummingbird moth can you see them absolutely beautiful that's amazing Oh, it's just an... Yeah, so this is actually a type of Achillea. Um, it's called the Pearl, I think. Yes, it's called the Pearl. And it comes up with these beautiful, and these look amazing in bouquets. They just give a bit of a, just a, especially bride's bouquets, they look so lovely. Um, so I'm actually on a path, believe it or not. <laughs> and there is actually matting down. As you can see, I've got white matting here made out of an old rubble bag which I've used here um, and I've got some scabious here so see that's not so bad here but this is the bed the one and only one that I did as uh, weed with weed fabric and it's done really well I wasn't sure at the beginning because it looks so bare but I love these these are like straw flowers you can hear they're crispy but they're amazing they've done really well because they came up with just one flower on each and I was like oh that's not how I was expecting them. Um, but the slugs and snails do like them, as you can see on this one. You can see he's just been eaten. He's got a lovely long stem though, so still worth using. Um, and once you take that middle stem out, it'll be good for... It, it'll start branching out from the bottom better. But I will need to... I'm thinking of getting some nematodes for this lot, for slugs and snails, because I don't really want to be put in slug pellets down on top of weed membrane and these are the snake these are the snapdragons which are doing really well um and then that's my daughter's onions you can't even see them because of the weeds so that really is needing sorted and then a beautiful beautiful white cosmos look at that that's amazing so pretty so as you can see you need to work with your weeds um don't automatically think they're the enemy um some of these weeds have a complete ecosystem of their own and I'm all about wildlife and introducing things onto the plot because a lot of people, obviously on the plots, so everyone's different here. So some people do their plots differently and a lot of people use chemicals um, and pesticides, which I don't. So each one of my plots is a haven for wildlife. And I know there's a lot of other people here that have that as well. So that's what I really like. Um, so sometimes I think, Everyone wants these really neat, tidy beds with bare earth, you know, all around their plants. But I'm not so sure personally that that is a way to go. I think some of the weeds, they'll keep in the moisture. Um, and as you see, some of them have got such tiny root systems that they're not taking from your plants. They're just, they're actually covering the ground for you. So they're going to hold in moisture when we do get 
really hot days again and actually it's turned out quite nice today hopefully it stays like this because I've got quite a lot to do here today so this is my worst plot the one up there is all raised beds so it is so super easy um because you can spend five minutes on each bed just whipping out the weeds and so I don't really worry about that this was going to be my major problem because it was freshly dug over this year we I put the same horse manure on this bed at the horse farmyard manure on this bed that I did on the ones at home and I think that was a really bad idea now I thought if you bought it from a shop it would have been I don't know treat I don't know not treated but like to a higher tough temperature that all the weed seeds would have come out of it but clearly not because I've got very similar weeds here the ones I've got at home so I'm just going to stick to my chicken poo because I know what they eat you know and if you get a bit of corn popping up here and there who cares you know you can use it in the display <laughs> so there we go I hope that gave you a bit of an insight into how I grow my cut flowers here um, I prefer to work with nature than against nature um, I always feel that there's always going to be a compromise in anything that we do um, and we need the we need the wildlife to help us pollinate we need we need the little bugs to eat the bad bugs so if you can introduce some bad bugs you'll always get good bugs um, green fly on my neck lovely <laughs> see but it's just the way it is and you just need to work with what you've got um, I'll weed what I need to weed and the rest I will leave I don't have the time to be here every day weeding um, and frankly you've got better things to be doing like arranging flowers and selling your flowers um, and doing marketing and all these things that actually mean that you're inside more than you think you ever would be when you take on doing cut flower gardening I just assumed when I did it it would I'd be outside every day in the sunshine merrily skipping down the rows with my beautiful bouquets of flowers in reality I'm not I'm out in the rain pretty much every day <laughs> and I'm spending a lot of time marketing trying to get people to buy the flowers because I can grow as many flowers as I can but I still need to be able to sell them to make a profit to make myself some money so um, that is one of the biggest things that I, buy, I, I have found by doing this that I didn't really think about but anyway I hope that was a really good insight for you and please subscribe if you haven't turn on the little bell not notification therefore you'll know every time I put a new video out and I will see you in the next one bye bye my chickens are sunbathing very cute Pigeon just fell out of the tree. <laughs> oh, some moving chickens.